Many progressives are not happy with any scaling back of the bill and at times have threatened to hold back their critical support. Minnesota Congresswoman Ilhan Omar is the whip of the Progressive Caucus, which means she is in charge of whipping up votes. And Congresswoman Omar joins us right now. Thank you so much for coming in. Great to be with you, Esme. All right. This is a big bill, as big as anything since the New Deal back in the 1930s. Is the scaling back, are you going to be able to support it? Are other progressives going to be able to support a scale back bill? Yeah, what we are looking for is having a bill that touches people's lives, that actually creates investments so that people can feel it. Um, you know, I talk to my constituents who don't have paid sick leave right now, so four weeks would make a difference in their lives. We don't have universal pre-school uh, and that would make a difference in, in people's lives and anything that we can do to expand Medicare um, for so many people would make a difference in people's lives. All right. So do you think, can you bring enough of the Progressive Caucus? Without the Progressive Caucus, this bill's not going to pass the House. Uh, certainly. I mean, what we have been uh, saying is that we can't, right, um, try to make too many concessions Okay. to these two senators without making concessions to the progressive bloc. And I think okay. we're going to try to find a happy medium for everyone to be able to support a package. One thing that's affected an awful lot of families in the positive way is this child tax credit, getting checks every month for 250 or $300. You folks, the progressives wanted to keep make that permanent. What's the reality, do you think? I mean, where we are at right now is um, probably trying to extend it for another year. What we believe is that these investments, once they start, um, are things that we can continue to build on. And, you know, this is a very popular okay. program. It's um, duped as being one that is cutting child poverty into half. Uh, and I think it's an investment that we have to continue to invest in. All right. Is this thing going to pass? I mean, we've been talking about this for weeks and weeks and weeks. Now they're saying there's a deadline of Halloween. I mean, do you think this is going to get past the finish line? I mean, there's artificial deadlines that are being yeah. set. I don't know if any of them will be met. But what I do know is that the, the president, um, uh, Leader Schumer, uh, and us in, in the House are working um, around the clock to try to find a uh, way to compromise and get to a deal that will ultimately pass. All right. Uh, the president, I guess, is with Senator Manchin in Delaware today and Senator Schumer. I know you have been troubled just judging from your social media that, that there are two Democrats who, in your view, in the Senate who are holding this up. Yeah, they, they have been obstructing, obviously. Uh, and, you know, the fact that they are now getting on board and having these, these conversations is uh, a promising sign. Right. All of us wanted them to be at the table and to negotiate. Okay. Uh, and they're doing that right now. And I think we will get to a deal soon. And Kristen Sinema seems to indicate that she could support this billionaire's tax. Is that the way this is going to be funded, taxing the 700 billionaires in, in the U.S.? That would be um, a, a really fantastic thing if that happens. Okay. Let me ask you about your endorsement in the Minneapolis mayor's race. It is ranked choice voting. You endorse two candidates, Sheila Knuth and also, um, Sheila Najad, excuse me, and Kate Knuth. And they were standing there with you as you made the endorsement. Is it odd to be endorsing two people at once for the same office? No, I mean, we have ranked choice uh, voting and there, there's beauty in that. Uh, people do get to have multiple choices that they get to um, rank in, in their ballot. I voted yesterday and I did the same thing. And I think it's really important for people to um, remember, you know, there's a lot of conversations about uh, there being divisions in, in our city. Uh, and this is a way for people to come together to say, uh, Mayor Fry has failed us and we need to move forward. All right. You have also been a big proponent of the amendment charter number two, uh, in which the P Minneapolis Police Department would be replaced. As you talk to people, is that really what people want? Because there's some indications that in a lot of areas, that's not what people want. I think people have um, not received the proper information, right? There's a lot of fear mongering and um, uh, misinformation that's out there. What people want is to feel safe in their communities and we can't have uh, a failed department continue to exist. And what this, this charter will allow us to do uh, is have it be in line with uh, what other cities have and get 
uh, a public safety department that will actually prioritize the safety of our citizens in the city. All right. Well, Congresswoman Ilhan Omar, thank you so much for your time. We'll be following what goes on in Washington this week to see if it gets done. Yeah, looking forward to it. All right. Thank you so much.